Hello friends, welcome back to Sabir CAD. In this video, we will continue with dynamic blocks. We have already seen few types of dynamic blocks. Please click on the link provided at the upper right corner as well as at the description section of this video. If you haven't gone through my previous videos on dynamic blocks, now I'll click on this particular table and there are two chairs on both sides. And now you can call this as a restaurant table. I have got a grip and this is nothing but a stretch grip. I'll just click on this grip and move the mouse rightward. Now you can see that two more chairs got added up. Now it's almost like a dining table. Now I'll drag it rightward. Two more chairs got added up. Now I'll move rightward. Now you can see more and more chairs are getting added up. When I take my cursor onto this particular point, it's like a conference table. When I take the cursor further rightward, the stretch action got stopped because I have set a limit for this action. Now I'll make a click here. We will see how to create these parameter and actions to make such a dynamic block. So let's get started. This is a table and a chair which is created using rectangles and polylines and I performed hatching inside this area. Next I am going to block this object using the block command. So I will click on the insert tab, create block, then I will give a block name, table chair. I will click on pick point and I will choose this corner point as the insertion point. I will select all these objects using a standard window. Then make sure that open in block editor is checked and I'll give OK. Now I'm in the block editor interface and I'm going to assign a linear parameter. So click on parameters tab and click on linear. I'm asked to specify the start point. I'll pick the start point on the left side and I'll pick the end point on the right side. Now I'm asked to specify the label location. I'll just pick a point to specify it. Now you can see that I have picked from here to here because I want to stretch in the rightward direction. You can see an exclamation mark on this parameter because I have been assigned any actions to it. So I'll click on actions tab, then I'll click on stretch action. Now I'm asked to select the parameter onto which you want to assign this action. I'll click on the linear parameter. Now I'm asked to specify a point to associate it with the action. I'll pick this midpoint. Next I'm asked to select the first corner of the stretch frame, I'll pick here and the opposite corner over here. Now I'm asked to select the objects to be stretched. I'll select this area using a crossing window and I'll give an enter. Now let's see the stretch action. I'll click on test block. Now I'll select this block. You have got a stretch grip. I'll pick a point over here. When I move the mouse, you can see that it is getting stretched on the rightward direction, but you can stretch it through infinite length. Close the test block interface. Now I'll select the linear parameter. Then I'll press Ctrl 1 to get the properties palette. Here there is a value set rollout and I'll specify the distance type as list to specify a list of predefined values. I just click on this list and I'll add certain values 180, 270, 360, 450 and I'll give 540. I'll give OK. Next I'll click on test block. I'll select the block and here I have the stretch grip. Just move the mouse. You can see that it is snapping at 180, then 270, 360, 450 and 540. And you cannot stretch it beyond this value because we have limited it to 450. Now I'll make a pick to perform the stretch action. I'll close the test block. Next we will associate one more action to the linear parameter that is the array action. So I'll click on array. Now it will ask you to specify the parameter onto which you want to associate this action that is the linear parameter. Now I'm asked to select the objects to be arrayed. I'll select these two chairs using a standard window. Then I'll give an enter. Now I'm asked to specify the distance between the columns. I'll give 90 and give enter. Next I'll test the array action. For that I won't be using the test block option. I'll close the block editor and save the changes. 
and try it on the actual block. So I'll click on this block and you have got the stretch grip. Just activate this grip and move the mouse rightward. You will see that two chairs getting added up because the array action is working. Now, as you go on moving rightward, you can see that more and more chairs are getting added up. But once you reach on to the limit of the linear action which you have specified, you won't be able to array it further. Now I'll click to complete the operation, escape to deselect. Now I'll click on the stretch grip and stretch it back to this size and I'll save this file. Now we will see how an AutoCAD dynamic block renders in BricsCAD. BricsCAD is a smart and cost-effective CAD solution and it has got a number of intelligent features. I'll open the drawing file in BricsCAD and it's opened read-only because it's already opened in AutoCAD. Now we'll select this table. You have got the grip points here. Now we'll activate this grip and drag it rightward and you can see that it renders perfectly well. That means it works exactly in the same way as it works in AutoCAD. Hence, if you are using a number of dynamic blocks in AutoCAD, you can very well make use of all those dynamic blocks in BricsCAD. So download BricsCAD and start your 30-day trial at Brixis.com. So this completes a tutorial on dynamic blocks. Until I catch you with another informative video on CAD, bye bye and take care. Thank you so much for your time. Please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel.